beautiful welcome back to my channel my name is tracy happy monday i haven't done a week in my life in years it's been years you guys i was looking back through some old videos and i don't it's been years <laughs> so anyway this is going to be a really busy week so i thought this would be the perfect time to document it and to see how my routines are working for me um I typically work from home on Monday, but we have a guest lecturer coming in today from Canada, and I needed to be here to facilitate all of that, plus we're having um, lunch brought in for um, his class, and uh, then after that, I'm going to go home and work for the rest of the day. I have a Zoom meeting this afternoon. Every department in the university is getting a new website. So I work with three different departments and I am responsible for those websites. So um, we have one website already completely up and going and then we have two more left to work on. So I need to have a meeting today with the IT team um, to get some things together for the meeting we were having with everybody on Wednesday. So there's two Zoom meetings this week about the websites. And then we have another lecturer coming in on Thursday um, from Yale University as part of the uh, um, Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. celebrations here at the university. And I am so excited about that particular lecture. Um, I'm actually going to sit in on that lecture. I'm working it. So I need to be here for breakfast and lunch. But also, I am going to actually get to sit in on that lecture and hear that. And I'm very excited about that. So I'll definitely share that with you guys on Friday, on Thursday. But I also have some things that I want to do in my personal life this week. Um, we'll see how it goes. I'm supposed to be taking a Tai Chi class this week, a yoga class this week and a journaling class this week so we'll see as each day comes because monday today is tai chi wednesday is yoga and thursday is journaling so today and thursday are going to be pretty busy days so i'll see how i feel at those moments and decide at that time what i'll do with those but i will make sure that i'm getting lots of water and make sure that i'm journaling and sticking to my planner really being in my planner has truly helped me because honestly this entire spring semester has been truly truly busy it's been so so busy um so, so my planner has really been my my personal assistant <laughs> so um i'll look through that and just see what the week brings but either way i am going to bring you guys along with me so now it's a little bit chilly got my gloves my dad's girlfriend always sends me the most random gifts every single year like she sent me these gloves this year that i just put in my car thank goodness because they were not in my pocket and then she sent me like this watch and bracelet set which i love them both and every year i'm like how did you know how did you know what to give me she's so funny but uh, anyway um let's head into work and get the day started take a zoom call i have seven minutes so i need to make myself a glass of water um, but i wanted to show you guys this journal this is the daily elegance journal by notique one of the things that i really want to do this year is to bring a little bit more elegance and lady likeness to my life and also a lot more color um this is so stunning in the simplicity of the black and white um, this is what it looks like on the outside. This is a cloth fabric. This is not like a 
flip book on the you can hear it so it's a, it feels like it has fabric over the top of it i am really working hard to keep it as clean as possible it also comes with a little ribbon bookmark there is a little pocket in the back and this is just a journal that allows you to kind of just write out your thoughts it asks you this set of questions and so the first one is what am i what I am thankful for today, where I spent my time today, who I loved on today, how I cared for myself today, what I learned today, my feelings, my thoughts, and my hopes. So I don't fill this out every single day, but I do fill it out on the days that I go into the office for work. And so what I like to do on this page is just answer the questions just as they are and just kind of i'll date it up here and just say answer the questions how my day was then over here on this blank page also this is dot grid but over here on this blank page i like to do what's called future journaling which means i like to kind of imagine what i would like my day to look like one year from the day that i write over here and i'll just do i'll date it for one day in the future and then i just kind of journal what i want this day to look like in the future as far as my career is concerned as far as just everything that i would prefer to be doing <laughs> on the day uh, versus what i did for for the day is usually how it goes but if there's days where there's really good days and I just want more of that, then I will journal more of that. But for every one of these days, I like to add a little bit of deco. I'm not going to show you the ones from the past. Maybe I can show you one. I don't think I can show you. Yeah, I'll just show you this one doll. So I like to decorate it. And so I have this one here, which I think is so pretty. And this particular day, I did journal about going to yoga and how much fun I had. So I like to have a gold mining cocoa doll for each day. And what I like to do also is at the beginning of the week, go ahead and set this planner up for the week. I'll just do about four to five pages at a time. Because even though I only go into work three days a week, some days working from home can be extremely taxing. So I like to journal about those days as well. And so this is how it is all set up for the week. I This is what a blank page looks like. I really absolutely love having this planner so much. This has been such a great tool for me as far as really getting my thoughts out on paper, not holding anything in for too long, and really deciding like what I really want to do with my career and with my life and with my days. So this has been so much fun for me. Okay, let's jump on this Zoom call. After this Zoom call, I am going to go walk on the Greenway. I'm not going to go to Tai Chi. I just don't want to listen to any instructions today. <laughs> I just... Had I not gone to the office today, I probably would have felt fine about going to Tai Chi, but I just want peace. So I am going to take a walk on the walking trail. I have some pizza left over. I'm gonna make a salad and have pizza for dinner.
Orange Sky Audio presents Fake It Till You Make It, a novel by Jamie Wesley, narrated for you by Cassiopeia Devora. To anyone who's ever had a dream. Chapter One. Donovan Dell was a professional football player who loved to bake. Seriously. He was used to the quizzical looks people gave him when they learned he, a man who made a living terrorizing quarterbacks, co-owned Sugar Blitz, San Diego's latest and best cupcakery. He didn't care though. Baking relaxed him. Running his own business thrilled him. His plans for his post-playing career were starting to take This Wednesday evening. I did not work all day today. I worked from home today, but I was in so much pain. I just could not work the whole day. So I logged out about one o'clock and I just got up at five o'clock. So I came in and made myself some dinner. I have this pretty big salad here. I am going to put some chickpeas on it. I um, air fried these. These have the tiniest, tiniest amount, not even a full cap full of olive oil on it, um, some cumin, paprika, garlic powder, salt, and pepper. Um, so I'm excited to see how it actually tastes on it. It's pretty good and they're very crisp. So I'm gonna put that on this big salad. Then I made this dressing. It has cashews, balsamic vinegar, agave nectar, Dijon mustard, Italian seasoning, nutritional yeast, salt, and pepper. And then I just meal prepped some rice because at lunch i ate all the rice that i had meal prepped so i was like oh no who <laughs> cannot be out of rice so this is just jasmine rice that i cooked in the air fryer i always just leave it plain that way throughout the week i can make it taste however i want to taste if i want to stir fry it add it to a soup or eat it like with some mushroom gravy on top of something like that i can just do it really easily so this is just about a cup and a half i think then I am having some kombucha. So I'm going to have a salad with some chickpeas on it and this dressing, my kombucha, and I'm going to get ready for tomorrow, like lay my clothes out and all of that. Make pack my bag. I actually need to clean out my work bag too. I'm going to grab a book. I'm reading the same book and I'm reading that book so freaking slow. I think I may need to <laughs> grab another book. Let me grab another book tonight because it may be the book and not me. But anyway, um, I'm going to do that and then I will see you guys in the morning. You guys, I have not started my evening routine. It's a little early yet. Uh, it's not five o'clock yet. I am so tired, y'all. <laughs> okay. I got up from my desk about 9 15, 9 30 this morning. And I got back to my desk at three o'clock. Mm -hmm. 
it was an exhausting day, but I am so thrilled about the day at the same time. It's a weird thing. So today was the day we had the guest lecturer from Yale. I'll pop a picture up of her up here just from her website and I will link a couple of her books in the description box below. Her name is Dr. Dracita Taylor and she teaches at Yale University. And she came to campus today to give a lecture on the intersection of civil rights and environmental justice. And this lecture was through the lens of Dr. Martin Luther King. So she started out talking about him around the age of nine and some realizations that he had all the way up to his assassination. And she talked about so many different things. She talked about food disparities. She talked about redlining. She talked about um, how, this is something I talk about with my professors all the time, is about how much nicer the air quality is and how much cooler it is when you step on campus versus anywhere else down in the downtown area or in different places and we always talk about how there are these beautiful trees and wildlife on campus and there are arborists that are on staff and the groundskeepers the maintenance department the grounds department are like top notch and just how beautiful it is and just based on the amount of trees just how much better the air quality is and how this is such a difference I, when I lived in Memphis I would tell my cousin I, I used to work I lived in the city of Memphis but I worked in Carrierville which is an affluent part of town and I would always tell my cousin that it would be cooler once I hit the Carrierville city limits I, I didn't understand it. I thought it was just money. <laughs> just how rich people are just different, which is the case because they tend to have more trees in the area than um, more poor parts of town. And so there's something we talk about all the time. There's something she talked about as well. Um, you guys, this was one of the most... I've not sat on... I think this is my very first lecture. Like, I've... Like I talk to professors all the time, they kind of tell me what their syllabi, syllabus, syllabi is. Like I get to see syllabi and we have conversation about different books and some of my professors have written books and I've kind of skimmed through them or read them. I have one that I just got signed that I do want to read about coffee. But um, this lecture was, I truly felt like after listening to this lecture, I was just like, my life just changed. Like, I, I'm not the same person I was before I listened to this lecture because I don't know who dog it is. But anyway, after listening to it and just some of the things she has to say, one of the things that caught my attention, and I am very interested in seeing more research come out, well, she was talking about how Black children were shipped from the South to the North, specifically from like Atlanta to Connecticut in the 40s to work on tobacco plantations in Connecticut. And she talked about how poor the condition was and how they specifically chose Black children from the South and not Black children from the North where they were, definitely not any white people. But this was just how very strategic and very specific from the South and how out of these same tobacco fields birthed Martin Luther King Jr., birthed Thurgood Marshall, it birthed Hattie McDaniel, the first black woman to win an Oscar, and also Mahalia Jackson and Arthur Ashe were... I, if if I'm not mistaken, she said either they were on the same tobacco field at some certain points or if it was just tobacco fields in Connecticut specifically. That was crazy fascinating to me. And it was interesting because when we went to this was so after the lecture, we had lunch with some of the professors. So let me back up a little bit. This is how the day went. Dr. Taylor side off the morning with breakfast with the grad students. Then she gave her lecture and then she had lunch with faculty. So I was 
a part of all of the entire day. I was not her handler, but I kind of was her handler. <laughs> like I was making sure she was moving through the day, getting to the pl per the correct place. I'm so tired, I can't hop top, the correct places. And so I got to hear her interact with the grad student, which was so beautiful. And she was so given and so generous with her knowledge and information and her encouragement. She was so generous. And then when she did the Q&A after her lecture, once again, she was very generous with her information and the same thing at the lecture with the faculty. So when she got to the lecture with the faculty, she started talking about these black leaders that we know today in black history had the same South to North tobacco field pipeline. One of the other professors who was actually not a professor at our college he knew she was coming so he came over to hear her lecture he said his father was the same way if i'm not mistaken his father was from tennessee and would go up north to ohio to the candy manufacturers and he said in the same time that he was doing candy he knew the man who created the magazine black enterprise which Listen, Black Enterprise has always been one of my favorite magazines. And then they used to do a TV show. Do y'all remember Black Enterprise used to do the little TV show? Oh my gosh, I, I would always watch the little TV show because I would always learn the most fascinating things. I always loved the TV, TV show. So it was the same thing. So we they were, and they were talking to lunch. And then I was sitting at the table with my manager and my supervisor and they were listening to it too. And they were like, I wonder what it was that created out of these tobacco field or these canning factories, these affluent black people we know today. And I was like, that is, that's the question. Like that is so fascinating to me. I think part of it is one, she, in her lecture, she talked a lot about, she had a lot of excerpts from Dr. Martin Luther King's letters to his mom when he was working those tobacco fields in the summertime, and also a lot of his journal entries. And one thing that he really disturbed him when he had to go back to the South is that he had to be back on the bus, in the back of the bus. He also couldn't sit at certain restaurants to eat. He also couldn't just walk down the street and feel like a human being in the South. But in the North, it was different, so he had this false sense of comfort that he wasn't getting in the South. So I felt like when they went to these, left the South and went up North, they had a they had an opportunity to, to dream. They had an opportunity to see life a little bit differently, which then allowed them to create something different for themselves. It was... I am not going to be, I am not saying Trace Adams to the lecture. And I was like, I know why universities charge so much. I know why they try to keep certain people out because that's what information is. That's what information is. You can read all of these books, but it would take you a long time versus getting the type of knowledge you can get from a lecture like this in addition to the books that you read and one of the coolest things she talked about was how detroit is having this insurgence of black farmers and black people really growing their own food and she talked about the seeds of heirloom tomatoes and how they're owned or patented by a certain company. So if you have the seeds as heirloom tomato, then they'll try to sue you and put you in jail. She talked about the same thing when Thailand and, and Jasmine Rice. So she talked about redlining. She talked about how black people were not allowed to be in parks, as we talked about with the trees and everything, unless they were with their white children that were in their charge that they actually worked for in those moments. She talked about how sitting on the back of the bus was not just racially damaging with segregation, but it was also damaging based on the fact that when you opened the bus doors, the back of the bus where the exhaust was, and it was the worst air quality you could get. Yo! She said some fascinating things about redlining. Very fascinating things about redlining. It, it was, 
it was it was it was a very interesting day i am always like i said the whole tree thing or the air quality being different in richer neighborhoods has always been something that i noticed but it wasn't until i started kind of working where i am and talking to different professors about it and how true it actually is this is something that's just all i think i feel like the lecture today really filled in some missing puzzle pieces in my brain i don't know how or what this information how i will be able to use this information in life other than tell you guys about it right now i i'm just not this like it was amazing and everyone was just clamoring to meet her after everyone was like and well, i was about to tell you about the detroit farmers um one of the professors that works with me had his student with him and he was like dr taylor dr taylor this is my student she's a black farmer and she had one of dr taylor's books already and she dr taylor signed it for her and it was just such a magic moment this yeah it was it was it was a good day it was tiring i'm exhausted my feet are hurting i'm about to pull out my foot bath and just sit here and let my feet soak in some epsom salt water and i'm gonna color i'm gonna spend some time coloring i'm not gonna do anything i have plenty of leftovers from work so i'm gonna have that um and i'm gonna rest and i'm just gonna sit and i'm gonna color and light a candle and i'm probably just gonna put on some light music and just kind of meditate on what i heard today and i gave you such an incredibly quick synopsis of everything i couldn't even take notes i was so riveted by the whole thing i couldn't even take notes okay that's what i'm gonna do for this evening happy thursday I feel like Dora the Explorer, we did it, we did it, we did it. We, <laughs> we made it through the week. If you guys just knew how tired I am today, can y'all tell, I tried to put mascara on this morning, but I poked myself in the eye and I was like, no, we won't be wearing mascara today. Um, My hair looks crazy. I am so freaking proud of my hair, you guys. I love my hair so much. It's taken me a minute to really just say that out loud, but I am loving my hair so freaking much. This just means that there is growth. Um, I had a really rough day. Because I'm so tired, I had like these little mini breakdowns all day, <laughs> like emotional breakdowns, like 
just all kinds of weird stuff was going on in my head because I am just so freaking tired. So I get home today and I haven't been to the mailbox in days. So I was like, let me go to the mailbox. And this morning, I was going to message a friend of mine just to tell her, you've been on my mind for days. I hope everything is moving forward with your life. Like, I love you. I see you. I pray for you. And just keep moving forward. So she's a really busy person. You guys know Felicia. Some of you may know Felicia Drill. She owns Go Mine and Coco. I will link Go Mine and Coco in the description box below. And so um, I didn't. I'm always hesitant to message her, like I say, because she's so freaking busy. Um, and I didn't. And then I get home, and there's this package <laughs> in the mail with this card and a beautiful note inside. And some dolls inside I'm gonna spread them out um they won't be out she these dolls are releasing these release on 210 so by the time you see this video um hopefully there will still be some in the shop let me, let me act like I know I'm doing the right thing <laughs> how gorgeous these all are and I don't know the name of this collection but I wanted to take a minute to show you guys all of the gorgeousness that is Gold Mine and Coco. Just in case you don't know who Gold Mine and Coco is, now you. Oh! oh my gosh, I'm seeing them for the first time too. Oh my gosh, I love the one with the umbrella. They're so freaking pretty. Listen, this is so sweet. Um, let's see what else we have in here another package in here there's quite a bit of stuff in here i'm gonna have to make some reels a whole pack of gorgeousness there um let's see what's in here oh you guys the funny thing about it is i literally just ordered these this morning which is fine now i'll have plenty because i will always use them these are scripts and they are on that really thin, like transparent matte paper that's like washi. And also there's a sticky note in there. There is, oh my goodness, this is so cute. And I've been wanting to go over to Marshall's and get some new like travel bags. Oh my gosh, how cute. I am planning three trips this calendar year and a couple of in-between trips to Memphis. And when I went to Memphis last time, I just felt like my bags weren't cohesive. So I actually have these on my freaking list from Marshall. So now I have these ones. They feel like faux leather. So this one's a little bit bigger than this one. Y'all. I am really loving the direction that Gold Mining Coca is going. Look how cute. I'm sure these are like for pens and pencils and stuff like that for your planner. But I'm using these. These are going straight into my luggage i'm gonna put these in my luggage these are gonna be my travel bags and this <laughs> let's see what this is These are some of the best freaking ink pens ever. And I had this one in my cart this morning when I was checking out and I took it out. And I'm glad I did because I just thought, I don't need another ink pen. <laughs> but apparently I do. Apparently I do. This one is black and white. It's so simple and gorgeous. This one just has like little stripes on it. This one has Peyton with a bun on it this one is gorgeous it looks like it just has the logo on it it may say something else but i don't know what to say and then this is painted with two buns so stinking freaking cute i'm legit tripping so i definitely have to do a reel now showing all my gold mine cocoa pens because i have several of them because listen the pens are just so freaking good and then I wanted these too, but I didn't get them this morning because I needed groceries. Um, <laughs> so, oh my gosh. 
Okay, another little, um, I love these. These are, this is a sticker album where you can put like, I'm gonna take all of these and slide them in here individually so I have them. So that's to hold those. And I desperately wanted this. This is the Goals Journal. I didn't see it on the site. That's okay, cause we got it now. So this is what it looks like. Even though uh, January is already almost over, it's only like four days left in January, I'm still gonna fill this out because I'm very proud of the work that I've done this month so far. And then you have your reflections page. And then you have, it goes each month like that. So I'm very excited for this. I cannot wait to dress this up with so many dogs. Cannot wait to use this. This notebook though? Oh, this notebook. I'll tell y'all something about Go My Coco paper quality. Listen, it's top tier. It's top tier. Now, I'm an administrative assistant, so I understand paper, okay? This paper is top freaking tier. I love it so much, so this is just a plain lined notebook. And you just cannot have too many of these. In this aligned journal, this is what I really wanted to order today. I'm not going to open it. I'm going to open it. I'm going to create a reel and open it. I really, really wanted this and I'm so excited that she sent it. This was just such a thoughtful, this was just a thoughtful package. This was so freaking thoughtful. I am so grateful. Thank you so much, Felicia and the team for sending this over. I greatly appreciate it. I am just sitting here surrounded by gold mine and cocoa goodness. It's just a good day. Listen, it changed my whole mood because I was struggling out here in these streets. I'm so freaking tired. I'm going to end the vlog here. This week absolutely did not go according to plan. I worked out four days last week. I have worked out zero times thus far this week. The goal is to go to the gym tomorrow about one o'clock and then to, if the weather's okay, to go on the walking trail Sunday. And if the weather's not okay, to do like a good 45 minute yoga session here at home. Um, I didn't get to really show you guys anything other than me working, which is absolutely what I did not want to do with this vlog. But it's also a journal of my life. So, even though the week did not go according to plan, we still planned every single day. And I'm going to continue to plan because it's going to go according to plan one day. <laughs> Thank you guys for watching this part. Did y'all watch this far? Y'all good if y'all watch this far. I appreciate you so much. Thank you for being here. And I will see you in the next video. Bye, beautiful.